If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this. People, what creepy, unsettling thing have you or someone you know experienced that freaks you out to this day? When I was about 8, I stayed the night at a friend's house who lived about two houses down from me. I had always gotten a really strange vibe from her house, but it was my first time staying over. Her family was quite large, and we lived in modular homes, so she slept in the living room. The day was fine, and I thought the night would be too since it was only a few doors down, but man, I was wrong. She and I had stayed up a bit watching TV, and finally, at about midnight, we went to sleep. I remember laying there unable to really sleep for a bit, and then I remember being woken up by shuffling at like 3 in the morning. I woke up and looked over, and my friend was still asleep, so what I was seeing was even scarier knowing no one else was seeing it, and I was so scared to even move. Upon waking up, I looked to the right of me, and on the floor were three completely black shadowed people crawling on their hands and knees in circles around the coffee table in the center of the couches we were asleep on. They were going slowly and kept turning their heads to look at me, but I couldn't see a single detail of their faces. I watched them for about 20 minutes before I was almost lulled back to sleep from watching them go in circles. In the morning, I told my friend and her family, and they all told me, we don't know why that happens, but sometimes it does. And then they just moved, and when I would sleep over, they had a sleep in a room. I have a personal one. I'm not sure if they were shadow people, but twice in my apartment, about a year apart, I've seen these creepy creatures. They looked like the rake, but bigger? The first time I saw this thing, it looked like a contortionist craw walking across a hallway opening, and the second time there was this huge creature that had to bend down because the ceiling was too low for it and it had antlers, this was also in the hallway except this time I was walking by the hallway opening and I saw it out of my peripheral vision. I'm usually super creeped out by things like this, but both times this happened, I felt really calm. I'm pretty sure I have insomnia, and I've always thought I've seen things, so I'm not sure if these were just my imagination, but they certainly were interesting. Regardless, I try to be nice and say if they leave me be, I won't ask for rent, and so far it's been great. Or I'm just paranoid. My kids have been warned since they were old enough to ask about Ouija boards to never play with them. They aren't toys. Please don't argue with me about this, I've had too many experiences with things haunting us after using them for me to listen to people say it's just a toy. My kids like to stay at my aunt's house, and she is of the type to believe a Ouija board is a party game and they should be able to play it. She used to play it at my great aunt's house with her cousin, which explains the shit I've seen there, but that's another story, so she bought my kids one. After I specifically told her they weren't to touch one, my kids and the neighbor kids played it with my aunt, and not long after I started noticing stuff going on in my house. My previously quiet house now I believe things were lurking here before the Ouija spirits joined, but they were chill and quiet. This specific spirit? No. It's loud. It's mean. My youngest, Dawn, alias, has hollered downstairs, freaking out because she's seen something standing in the corner of their bedroom. I've seen something peeking around the door frames at me when I come upstairs to pee. My favorite part has been the thing standing in a corner of my closet until the lights go out, then it drops to the floor and slithers like a snake. I had been complaining of feeling my blanket, it's a weighted blanket with a comforter on top, pressing down harder, but only across my calves. Then it sometimes goes up the side of my thigh towards my waist and stops. I put an iron nail under my side of the bed and made a banishing jar, and now it can't climb in the bed with me. So now it slithers under my bed and smacks the underside of the mattress. Apparently it's not just me that bothers, it likes to slither under Dawn's bed and thump her mattress up by the headboard. I told them maybe they shouldn't have played with a Ouija board because now I can't get the spirit to leave. A few years ago, I was traveling with my then boyfriend, road tripping to visit some relatives for Christmas. We were passing by a small town that was heavily damaged years prior due to organized crime, which meant a lot of murders and shootings. By the time we passed by, everything was at peace again. It was like 9 pm, and we were just chatting, and then I saw a man dressed in white sitting on the floor at the side of the road and I was thinking how dangerous it was, especially because he was looking to the field with his back to the highway. Then a trailer passed and blocked my view for a second. When the trailer passed and I could see again, there was no man but a cross where I had seen that guy before. That's the only creepy thing that has ever happened to me while traveling. I came home to my five-bedroom house at around 7.30 pm I walked down the long hall where most of the bedrooms were to put my clothes in the laundry. At the end of the hall, I could see a blue light from a computer screen. Before going into the laundry, I poked my head into the end room and saw what I assumed was my father-in-law sitting at the computer desk, that blue light shining on his bald head. I grunted hello and went into the adjacent laundry. 
While I was putting my clothes into the washer, I realized that my father-in-law wasn't even in the country, he lived overseas and would visit. I was home alone in a laundry room at the far end of the house, and I had definitely seen something sitting in the next room that should not have been there. After panicking for a few minutes, I gathered up the courage to flick on as many lights as I could and look into the room. Nothing was there, the room was empty, the blue light was gone, and the computer was completely off. I had a few other encounters in that house and learned after living there for several years that the previous owner's son had died of cancer while living there. My father-in-law was old and bald, whatever I had seen that blue light reflecting on was also bald or balding and looked to have a deformed face or missing teeth. About 15 years ago, some Navy buddies and I decided to go ghost hunting. We had heard of this place where some strage shit would happen. It was a park near a beach and railroad tracks in Pensacola, Florida. We went there and found that it was a trail through some woods that would go towards the railroad tracks, then would come back to the main road about one quarter a mile away. We went in, and everything was dark but not too creepy. About a quarter through the trail, one of my buddies started freaking out about some dude following us. We looked and saw nothing. We kept going, and he was knocked to the ground. He started struggling to get up. His eyes were bulging, and he wasn't breathing. He was struggling and trying to get up but couldn't. He was reaching for the wooden rails but still couldn't pull himself up. He even ripped two fingernails out of his fingers while trying. We tried to help him up but couldn't get him up. This was odd because he was the smallest one of us. It was like he was being held down. His lips were starting to turn blue, and he was frantic. Then, in the struggle, my other buddy's silver cross fell out of his shirt, and then everything stopped. We hightailed it out of there and never went there again. We actually never went ghost hunting again either. I hike a lot in remote areas. I was hiking in Pennsylvania, miles from anything. Not even on a trail, just bushwhacking through the woods when I come up on this guy about 200 feet away sitting on this log. Just sitting there in jeans and a hoodie over his head, staring at me. I wave. He doesn't wave back. I start walking over, wave again, and yell something like, wow, I wasn't expecting to see anyone else out here. No response. I was getting a little nervous, but, you know, I had already committed, so keep approaching. Then I start noticing rock piles in circles and things, like scraps of clothing, hanging in the trees. I get about 10 feet from him, and this freaking pheasant takes off, scaring the crap out of me. That's when I noticed it's a mannequin. Sitting there, dressed up, surrounded by strange rock piles and things hanging in the trees, miles from anything. I hightailed it out of there, thinking maybe I'd come upon something drug-related. I have no idea. One night, in the house I grew up in, out in the woods, which have since burned down from the tub's fire, I went to the front porch for a cigarette with my girlfriend. It was probably 2 a.m. No moon. Pitch black. Our driveway was long and stretched off to the right of where we were sitting for about 35 to 45 yards. It consisted of loose gravel and was surrounded by trees and brush. Our garage sat to the left of our porch and had a semi-bright yellowish-orange light that shunned just to the edge of the trees, grass, and tall bushes at the edge of the driveway. It was quite dim towards the end, but still visible enough. We were both enjoying a cigarette. When a rock landed in front of us and scattered rocks off to the left in the direction of the garage, we looked at each other puzzled, not sure what had just interrupted our peaceful cigarette break. I said, did someone just throw a rock at us? I stood up, glanced to the end of the driveway, and yelled, whoever is out there is going to get their butt kicked. At that moment, I looked and heard a small girl who sounded no more than four to six years old laugh and giggle. I also heard the sound of feet scuffling through gravel and saw the tall grass at the end of the driveway, as if someone or something had run through it. The thing is, if someone ran into it, it would have gone face first into a four foot tall brush and got all tore up and not had a good time. My skin stiffened, and my hair stood up. I knew it was a ghost. I told my girlfriend to get the duck inside and we locked the front door. I didn't get much sleep that night. No one would have been out there that night. In the pitch black which no moon, in an area full of wildlife. Especially a small child, let alone a fully grown man. My dad was a gravedigger as a teenager. Usually they dug a grave in the daytime and were done well before dark. Well, my dad decided to go screw around with some friends and told the other guy he'd be back to finish his part. He didn't get back until it was sundown. So now he was stuck digging alone in the dark with a gas lamp, this was a long time ago. He did have the company of the groundskeeper's little Jack Russell Terrier. So he's almost done, working on the last bit by the foot of the grave, when the dog starts making these alternating growls and whines. 
He was so focused on finishing the grave and trying to not freak himself out that he refused to turn around for a good 10 minutes. When he finally did, there was a massive guy standing at the tombstone, just staring down at my dad. He was wet from the waist down, and the bottom of his pants were torn off and covered in mud. My dad said he crawled out of the grave and ran like a bat out of hell. When he got to the road, about a mile away, there were police cruisers with their floodlights on, driving slowly and clearly looking for someone. I guess the guy had escaped from an asylum in the town and had waited in a few miles of swamps before walking into the cemetery. So it's April of 2014, and I was doing a little time in jail. I had my first son in January 2014, so I was already upset. I did something dumb to land in jail. I was still with his mom at the time, and we had gotten pregnant again. We were six weeks along at the time this situation happened to me. I was in my cell, trying to fall asleep after lights out which was 11 p.m. she had told me she was five weeks pregnant the week before visitation. Anyways, I tossed and turned for about 45 minutes before I got comfortable enough to finally fall asleep. I woke up from a nightmare I had. Above the sink in my cell, I saw some type of evil spirit, to me, it looked like the ghost from the first Insidious, they called it the lady in black or something. I was freaking out, pressing the button in my cell, trying to get the guards attention so I could tell them what was in there with me. They never answered whatever. I ended up staying awake until the next morning, and when shifts changed at 7 a.m., the guards called me to the door of the housing unit and told me that my girl had miscarried and that she wasn't pregnant anymore. So I had my cousin, who is really big into religion, and demons look up what I had described. The thing I had seen was the demon of a lady who kills children. A friend of mine owned a house that was about six years old, newly built, however, every time I visited, I had an uncomfortable feeling of being watched or an unknown presence in the house. Often, I would hear someone knocking on the back door, on a table, or in another room. My friend and his girlfriend were going through some issues, and he asked me to go by his house to pick up some of his items. He gave me the key, and I entered the house to pick up some items. When I approached the house, it was dark and eerie from the outside. I was afraid to enter on my own, so I waited for his girlfriend to show up before entering the house. Even though I felt so much negativity in that house, I was in and out in no time. A few months later, I was there helping him tile the main floor. The kitchen area was cleared out, and our tools and belongings were placed on the kitchen countertop. We were working away that night when his keys and cell phone flew across the room and hit the opposite wall. They were both placed on the countertop. That was when my friend told me his house was haunted, and he told me about all the events, shadows, footsteps, etc. He sold the house a few months later, and the new owner called, asking if he ever experienced weird stuff happening in the house, noise, things moving, people being pushed, etc. When I was around 14 years old, my brother was messing around with dark magic, and our house became active with paranormal incidents. The scariest thing for me was that while getting dressed for school one morning, I started moving really fast, and when I tried to control it, I started to go really slowly. I caught a glimpse of myself in the vanity mirror, and my reflection was smiling a wicked little smirk. It didn't look like me, it looked like someone inside my body suit looking back at me. I rented a house with a few friends off the Mississippi River. Wasn't just the mist rolling across the driveway, but things like, a sound of pool balls being played with, TV changing channels at random, radio playing while unplugged, a 125 pound rot running to the front door just to back away, and nothing there. But one night I was home and heard running up and down the hall, followed by a woman's voice hollering for Mike. Later that night, my roommate and I were taking the trash to the curb when we looked back and saw two figures standing in the window. I can only assume she found Mike. I was outside on a hammock, and I have motion sensor lights along my fence. I was looking up into the sky, meditating, and saying in my head, okay, universe, aliens, or whatever you are, I'm ready to meet you. And we shared feelings of love and empathy then. I went inside, and we were in San Diego, so our house was 30 feet from the neighbors with a fence between us. I had my motion sensor lights, each spaced 8 feet apart, there are 8 of them. I could see them from the kitchen where I was with my wife. This was maybe a minute later. The furthest light from us turned on, and a few seconds later, the next one turned on, then the third, then the fourth. This is at a slow walking pace, which gave me the vibe of not wanting to frighten a person. I'm still 40 feet away, and there is nothing there. There is not much in San Diego, very few bugs or birds, some lizards, but the lights never did this before or after. When the fifth light turned on and the others were turning off behind, all the hair was standing on end, and I said, sorry, this is scaring me too much. I'm not ready yet. Then it backed up, 
and the lights went the other way. My wife, who is into woo-woo stuff, turns to me and says, what did you do? She freaked me out by being completely calm and saying, don't worry, they are friendly. We lived in a big house that was located in the Blue Ridge Mountains. We grew up there, and nothing ever happened. But when we went to my grandma's house, which was just down the road, the creepiest things would happen to my sister. She would say that at night, after we all fell asleep, she would be woken up by a slap across the stomach. She thought it was me and came to my room to yell at me. When she came in, I was sound asleep, and she freaked out, so I let her sleep in my room. Another time we were outside playing, and it was getting dark. I said that as we were cleaning up, I had to go inside to the bathroom, and I would be back. She said okay, but when I got back, she was lying on the ground, screaming and crying. She said she saw me come out of the house, run right at her, and then punch her in the face. Then she said I took off around the corner of the house, and when she went after me, she saw something horrifying. She said it was a tall creature, probably about 7 feet, and wearing a black robe. She said she saw it and froze in fear, and it kept looking at her, but all she could see were its glowing eyes in the darkness. Then she said it let out a horrible scream, and she blinked, and it was gone. Then she collapsed on the ground, where I saw her. She told my grandma, but she acted like my sister was playing. Two days later, my grandma came flying up to our house at about 10.30am. She came in screaming. She said she was last night in the kitchen making brownies when she heard someone at the front door knocking. She said it was around 8, so she was a little scared, but she went to see who it was, and there was no one. She thought it was some kid from down the road, so she didn't think anything of it. But then later, in the kitchen, out of the corner of her eye, she saw a little man walking from the living room up the stairs. She flipped out. But then she talked herself down, thinking she was just seeing things. She said she didn't go to bed until 3 in the morning, which isn't unusual for her. And she said it was around 10 in the morning when she felt the blanket being pulled off of her. She shot up and saw a little man at the foot of her bed smiling. So she ran out of the house and came straight to us. She has now sold the house. I experienced a shadow person when I was about 17 years old in the house I grew up in, my parents still live there. It's a small three-bedroom house with all the bedrooms along a short hallway. I was in the first bedroom along the hallway, and I shared it with a younger sibling. My bed was next to the only window and across from the bedroom door. My sibling's bed was perpendicular to mine, so it kind of made an L-shape, with walking space between us. I remember waking up in the middle of the night, looking towards the foot of my bed, and seeing this humanoid form. It was standing at the foot of my bed and then walked out of my bedroom. I wasn't sure at that time what I saw, but I do remember that I just pulled the blankets over my head, turned over, and went back to sleep. I never mentioned it to anyone, as I thought maybe I had dreamt it. Until many years later, after I had already moved out, a younger sibling, who was now sleeping in my old bedroom, was telling a story about an experience they had a couple of years earlier. They had gotten home around 2 a.m. and were walking towards that bedroom. Right before they reached it, they saw a dark human form walk out, turn, and continue down the hall towards another room. I remember I just looked at them and said, was the shadow blacker than black? And they said, yes. I do remember my room being really dark, as we had blinds and curtains on the windows. One thing that stood out to me about the shadow was that even in the darkness, I could still make out the shadow form. I only saw it that one time. Some of my siblings, there are six of us, have experienced other paranormal things in the house throughout the years. But this was the only weird thing I had ever experienced there. My mama had lots of siblings, and as children, my cousins and I were raised together in three main council houses and flats by my four aunts, mama, and a few good uncles, there were a few more houses alongside the main ones. The main houses were my grand s, where my mama, me, and various older boy cousins were based, my auntie and uncle's flat, where they raised their three kids, and I spent most weekends, and my oldest Annie Jay's flat, where she lived with her four older teenage kids along with assorted girlfriends and boyfriends at various times, and where I spent half of my childhood. Auntie Jay was more like a second mother, I was as comfortable and close with her as I was with my mama. That day was a regular day, I was in the kitchen at the dining table, drawing or doing whatever seven-year-olds do. Mama was upstairs in one of the bedrooms, Jay was coming in and out of the kitchen, washing up and doing housework. My older girl cousin G was out with her friends, and my oldest boy cousins H and B were at work on the flower stalls. This only left my other older boy, cousin A, who was in and out of the flat, he was working on his car down on the estate with his mate D. J came back into the kitchen and said, you're the only one here, so you can help make dinner. Always liking to help in the kitchen, I readily agreed. 
I took my wheelchair to the sink to wash my hands, and on returning to the dining table, I happened to look up at the mirror. The mirror was positioned in such a way that it reflected part of the stairs, the middle part. As clear as day in the mirror I saw a tall, dark, solid figure leaning over the banisters. I automatically called you out. Hey! Guess what? I'm making dinner. Jay came back into the kitchen and said, who are you talking to? Hey, he's on the stairs. I replied. Jay looked confused and slightly annoyed. There's nobody on the stairs, love. I didn't say anything else, and I was quiet for the rest of the night. Later, G and A came in and, noticing I wasn't my usual loud, annoying self, asked me what was wrong. I told them both about the figure, and straight away A started telling me an obviously made up story about the flat being haunted by the man in black. I didn't believe this, of course. Halfway through, I began to laugh and said, I'm making it up, Shiv, there's nothing like that here. You should stop reading those stupid spooky stories, you're too young. G glared at her brother and said to me, it's okay, baby. A is right, there's nothing like that here, if there was, I would know, we would have seen it, wouldn't we? I nodded, and G cuddled me. That was okay, but knowing that my cousin made up the story made me more uneasy, because if it wasn't that, what did I see? As I said earlier, I spent half of my childhood at that flat, and I never saw or felt anything like that again, thank goodness. One time when I was in high school I was chilling with my homies and this one particular kid started kicking it with us his name was Derek Grove I remember that name by heart he started chilling so you know we're playing video games and such and all that and little Derek was all like I my mom's is calling I'm a head out and we all like our peace out gang and me and two other friends leave right after Derek did but we didn't see him walking and we walked out the door like not even 30 seconds after he did and I asked my other homies I was like where did Derek go and ISTG they were all like who? No one remembered him. No one remembered chilling with him or his name. I would be like, Derek, the kid, we were just chilling, but my friends would always be like, dude, there were only four of us. Now buckle up. This is the creepiest part. I pulled up a picture of us that we all took earlier, and I swear the spot where Derek was sitting was empty. No one was sitting there, and I remember so vividly Derek sitting in that exact spot, the creepiest thing ever. My dad, mom, and I all went to our local giant to go grocery shopping. My mom gave X, a fake name for my dad, the shopping list, and he walked off without saying anything. I found that weird because he was always talking. Not even 5 minutes later, X runs through the doors and says, I got turned around in the parking lot. What's happening? My mom responded, what do you mean? I just gave you the shopping list. X shot back, that wasn't me. Now, I should tell you, my father is a broad-shouldered, 6 feet 6 inches fellow. It's very hard to find a duplicate of him. We were all pretty shaken up and left the store. My parents are skeptics, so they brushed it off. I, however, came to my own conclusion. The doppelganger joined us in the store so quickly that we just thought it was my dad. It then noticed X coming up the walk and left with the shopping list. We never saw the doppelganger again. When I was growing up, I would always see people that no one else saw. It didn't start scaring me until around 12. My best friend has always seen things too. We ended up having a lot of creepy experiences together, but this one scared us the most. We were 13, she was sleeping over my house. My brother always had pretty extreme night terrors. So when we heard a noise outside my room, we assumed it was him. It was definitely past 1am in the morning, both my parents were sleeping, and all the lights were off in the house. When my brother would have these night terrors, I'd usually be the one to bring him back to his room. So we ventured outside my room, down the dark hallway. We go into the dining room at the end of the hallway and turn on the light. There's a sliding glass door directly across from us at the other end of the dining room. The dining room table is in between us and the door. We both see a boy sitting on the edge of the table with his back turned, facing the door. Something felt very off-putting immediately. But we thought it had to be my brother. We both called out his name. As soon as we said his name, I started to realize that this boy was way too skinny to be my brother, and his clothes were weird. Then I looked at the reflection in the sliding door. I almost shit myself. The boy's face was very skinny and sickly looking, and his eyes were huge and all black. He had the creepiest smile and was staring at me. This all happened within seconds, but it felt like such a long time that I was looking at that face. My friend grabbed my arm. I looked at her, and she had complete shock and horror on her face. We bolted to my room, shut the door, and started crying. Then we went over it together to make sure we weren't crazy. It still gives me the chills. 
This is a story about my little sister's experiences with the entity that haunted our home. This all took place in Florida when I was 15 and Liz was 11. Liz shared a room with me and our youngest sister. She slept on the top bunk, while I slept across the room in my own bed. I liked to entertain my sisters by telling scary stories or reciting the whole script to one of our favorite movies. Liz always had a habit of calling me out whenever I told a scary story. She didn't believe in ghosts, which makes this whole thing 10 times weirder. The first incident was probably around July, as I remember it being pretty hot. I had been asleep for maybe three hours when I was shaken awake by Liz. She asked why I was standing by her bed and staring at her. Having just been woken up, I was confused. I no longer sleepwalk, so I had no idea why she would think I was staring at her all creepy like. I got her back to bed and sat with her until she fell back asleep. The second incident was maybe four weeks later. While eating breakfast, Liz asked mom who the man in the hat was. Mom brushed her off, but I questioned her further. She told me that late last night, she woke up to find someone standing next to her bed, peering at her through the safety bars. She described the figure as a man wearing a fedora type hat who was all black. He was very shadowy and disappeared when Liz blinked. The third and most terrifying incident happened a few days later. I remember waking up after a particularly terrifying nightmare. I looked over to my sister's bed and noticed that Liz was sitting bolt upright, staring at me. I asked her what was wrong, and she answered, with fear apparent in her voice. The man in the hat was watching you sleep. That was the last and most terrifying incident I can remember. I don't believe he appeared again. We had our house blessed twice, so that may have deterred him. What do you think it was? I know we don't have any dead relatives that work, so I'm confused as to what the entity was. Before I was born, my parents bought a rundown house for a really cheap price. Two-story house with three bedrooms with sufficient lighting that is livable. Right behind the house, a river is located, and when rainy season comes, the house will be flooded and wild animals will enter the house. It was not a great location, though, and yet my parents were desperate to find somewhere to live after they got married. The last owner of the house was an old lady who was on her deathbed and wanted to leave some money for her daughters before she died. Well, two weeks after my parents signed the papers, she sadly passed away. My parents never knew anything about the history of the house. A colleague of mine who lived in the same area introduced the owner to my parents. All I know is that the house was built in the 1920s and was one of the first to be built in the area. So time passed. My sister was born four years before Mr., and we grew up there till I was seven. We had a good memory of the house, yet there was an event that my family and I could never forget. When I was six years old, my parents' room and our room, sisters and I, were right beside each other. I was a scaredy cat, and I always wanted to sleep beside my parents. Although that one night I didn't, something bizarre happened. Before my sister and I went to sleep, we brushed our teeth, and my sister accidentally spilled water on her pajamas. She changed into a new set of pajamas, leaving her set of wet pajamas in the bathroom. We then shortly fell asleep. I woke up at 3 a.m. feeling extremely cold and confused. I lived in a country where it was always hot throughout the year. We didn't have an air conditioner at the time. So with limited ventilation, the room was usually extremely hot. Looking around, still feeling confused, I was able to hear my sister's deep breathing on top of the bunk bed. Her breathing was in rhythm, and I didn't bother to check on her. I remember walking towards the door to move to my parents' room. Right outside our room is where our living room is located. A big grey couch is located in the center of the room, and there was my sister, wearing the wet pajamas, sitting on the floor in front of the couch. Her face was partly covered with her hair. Her hands were on her knees, where she was squatting while staring at me with a smile on her face. I vividly remember staring at her back and wondering, who's this girl? Is she my sister? I was extremely scared and dumbfounded, remembering that my sister was fast asleep in the room. Although it was hard to deny, she looked exactly like my sister. I remember that she was really pale and had the same haircut as her. But then, if she isn't my sister, then who is she? Whose girl is sleeping on top of my bunk bed? After a minute or two of staring, I remember running as quickly as possible to my parents' house. After leaving the mysterious girl outside and having a story to tell the next day, I still couldn't explain what happened. Three years ago, I came back home from work. For the weekend, my parents and my aunt, uncle, and cousins were staying over. It was Sunday, and I drove back to my neighborhood around 1 p.m. Or so. I noticed the front door was wide open, with my cousin's toys out in the front yard. I'm a bit cautious and confused, so I investigate. No one is in the house, but all their cars are still there. Dead silence. I tried calling my mom, dad, aunt, 
and uncle, but none of them replied after countless tries. I tried to walk around the neighborhood to see if they appeared anywhere, the whole neighborhood was too quiet. Nobody was outside, no dogs were barking or anything. Just me. Also, to clarify, I have a pretty active neighborhood, and to see that no one was around on a beautiful sunny summer day concerned me. So I keep walking around the neighborhood to find somebody, and literally, it's just quiet. I am more than freaked out, but an hour later I'm at home just trying to figure out what's going on, and they all arrive back and greet me. I never told them what happened, but it still creeps me out to this day. I lived in West Milford, New Jersey, and would take Clinton Road some nights to go to or from my boy's house. In case you haven't heard of Clinton Road, it's apparently one of the most haunted roads in America. It's around 7 miles long and pretty much all woods. No houses or anything, only at the very beginning on either side. No street lights, nothing. There's a 90 degree turn at a bridge with basically no warning, and tons of car accidents have happened there because of it. Anyway, I was driving home super late one night, maybe 1am or 2am I'm coming up on a winding part of the road, and I can see some headlights a bit up ahead. I got a really strange feeling and came to a near stop before reaching the big bend in front of me. Then the car came from the other way, and when they came around the bend, they were completely in my lane, like doing the widest ducking turn ever. If I hadn't gotten that feeling and slowed way down, then that person probably would have hit me. It would have been completely awful, I'd never want to be stuck in the middle of that road in the middle of the night. It's really, really creepy out there. We were camping in a desert. It must have been 2 in the morning and we were strolling or flirting with this handsome man. Let's call him Richard. We didn't constantly use the flashlight under the pretext of watching the stars. Plus, we had to hold hands so we avoided stumbling, etc. We were quite away from the others and could see the bonfire at the campsite from afar. It was the perfect chance to kiss and continue walking. Then, there was something in front of us, it was a pretty large shadow, darker than the night. We both thought it was some kind of bush. Richard turned on the flashlight so we could see what it was, and there was nothing there. He turned the flashlight off, and there it was again. At first, we both laughed. But then he turned the light on again, and once more, there was nothing to see but the earth. I started feeling nervous. Richard said we should get closer. We turned the light off and got near the dark spot, it was like three feet from us. But when he flashed it, nothing again. He wanted to touch it, but I have to admit that I was pretty scared by that time. I was sure we would fall into something, like a portal. Richard insisted. He touched the darker spot in the dark night and said, it's a plant. I moved my hand forward, and I felt something like straws. He turned the light on again, but there was nothing. We could still feel it, though. Too much for me, I asked him to go back to the camping place, and he agreed, trying to explain to me a weird theory of the light and the plants in the desert having the same color as the earth, thus camouflaging. I didn't buy it, and I'm pretty sure he didn't either. So we have had numerous paranormal experiences in our home, from voices, whether audible to the ear or through spirit boxes, to shadows, footsteps, and everything you can think of, we've witnessed, but this one specific time is the first time I personally have truly felt what it was like to be frozen with fear. We kept seeing a child spirit standing on the stairs, he would walk up and down and then just stand and watch. There were no features, he was just a dark silhouette. So I decided to sit on the floor directly underneath where this child was standing. That's when things got scary. I all of a sudden couldn't move, I was that terrified, and I hadn't even witnessed what was happening. My fiancé saw this child silhouette rise up and become what she described as a male adult. We have always felt child spirits were something sinister, and this certainly verified it for us. I have never felt fear like it, and I have had experiences since I was a kid. My daughter had the flu when she was four. My kids run crazy high fevers any time they are sick, like, 102 is a baseline for them. It's crazy. Anyway, she was sleeping in the living room with me so I could check her temperature throughout the night and give her meds. I'm lying on the couch, she is on her fold-out play couch next to me on the floor. At this point, her temperature was maybe 101, which is really good for her. I look down at her, and she is noticeably scared. She has the covers pulled up to her face. Before I can ask her what's wrong, she flips out. I mean, screaming, trying to run off the couch, and grabbing me. She stopped and continued screaming on all fours. It freaked me out. She had night terrors at the time, but with those, she didn't interact with us. She just screams. So she is screaming and looking down the hall, that's about 15 feet away, sort of at an angle. I am finally able to ask her what she is looking at, and she histically says, the skeleton man. I'm flipping out now too, thinking there is an intruder in our house. I'm looking down the hall, 
and I don't see anything, but she is still pointing and screaming, the skeleton man. I say, what is he doing? She says, he is asking me to come with him. I freak the heck out. I say you do not go with him. At this point, I didn't know what to think. I was afraid that maybe her fever was higher than I thought. I checked, and by this point, it was normal. I convinced myself she was seeing things due to her previous high fever or something. She is five now, and every now and then she talks about the skeleton man, and she hates skeletons still too. We've had weird things happen at our house, but that's the strangest. I was about 12 and staying at a friend's house one night. He had a big old house that was in the country with no neighbors. We were playing some N64 one night, and his mom and sister left to go to the store and pick up a movie. So we were the only ones home. A little after they left, we heard his sister's door slam hard enough to knock a few picture frames off the wall. We looked at each other and laughed, thinking our sister was pissed, and we stayed home. Time went by, and we decided to get something to eat and went downstairs. Sister's room light is on, and we can hear the TV. We both grabbed some cereal, and as we sat in the kitchen, his mom pulled in the driveway. Next thing, his mom and his sister walk in. We both look at each other and say we thought you stayed home. Tell them what happened and go upstairs to find her bedroom door locked and the lights and TV on. Unlock the door, and no one is there. Around that same time, things started happening over the next couple months. Like random noises, things are misplaced and found in weird spots. But one night his dad works and goes to work. So his mom is alone with the kids. She was lying on the couch, covered with a blanket, when something grabbed the blanket and dragged it into the basement. Like not even opening the door, just ripping it through the crack underneath. Before she even had time to fully freak out, she heard her daughter scream and run upstairs. She opens her door, and her daughter is sitting up in her bed, which has been moved to the middle of the room, and all her pictures on one wall were ripped down. She grabbed both kids and left the house. She told her husband that she would never go back to the house. Which she never did, not even to pack or help move. Years later, I was like 19. My friend and I were drinking and sitting around a fire when people started telling creepy stories. We looked at each other and told them about what happened at his house, which neither of us really ever talked about. The house was now abandoned, and as soon as we said where it was, everyone wanted to go. So five of us drive out to the house in the middle of the night. Find a way into the house. The house is pretty much empty and not that bad of shape. The paint is starting to peel and has that old, empty house smell. We go through the whole house, and three of us are in the basement, which is all cement and has two rooms divided by an open doorway. We are right about to go back upstairs when our buddy finishes his bottle of beer and throws it in the other room. It never makes a sound. That was enough for us to leave. When I was younger, I used to live next to this very old and rundown church. This church was one of the town's original buildings from the late 1800s. It had been remodeled a few times, but mostly the building had maintained its original design. It was a large, square, white plaster-sided building with a very short bell tower capping the top of the roof. The church had gone through several owners for various reasons and had also been used for several purposes while I was growing up. When I was very young, it was basically abandoned, and kids would sometimes play in it. I never really liked being in that church. It just made me feel uncomfortable, so I would rarely go into the church, even when other kids were there. At some point, it became a night school. The teenagers that had to attend school would say they would see spooky things out of the corner of their eyes or hear strange sounds when no one was talking. Very shortly after becoming a night school, they moved the school to another building. They said it was because they needed more space, but all the teens joked that it was because the teachers were frightened of the building. After being empty for another year or so, it was rented out to a family who turned it into their house. The family was lower middle class, just like my family, and they rented it because it was cheap. Their living room was basically the bottom floor of the building since the church hadn't been remodeled into a proper house, it was just being used as one. Even then, I didn't really like that church, it was directly attached to our yard, and I wouldn't get too close to it at night because it creeped me out. Despite the creepy church house, our families became fairly close in the short time they lived there, and my mom would babysit their infants for them pretty often. I was around 13 at the time and was friends with the two other kids who lived in the church. They would tell me they thought the church was a little creepy at night too, but nothing really interesting had happened to them. One night, my younger sister got scared of something and woke me up. She said she heard something weird outside her window and wanted me to check it out for her. Her bedroom window is on the second floor and faces the church. Now, I am not super keen on doing this, but I feel like I have too, so I do it anyway. I get to her window and look outside. To my relief, I don't see anything of interest. 
no marks on the window, nothing outside in the yard, and no cliched branches rubbing on the window. I begin to tell her it's fine when we both hear what sounds like a baby crying in the distance. I realize it must be the neighbor's baby, and I tell her not to worry about it. I just think to myself that their baby must be incredibly loud for us to hear it over here. I take another look out the window to see a woman in a red dress walking by the church window, cradling what must have been the baby. I get chills down my spine and look away quickly. I assume it was my neighbor's mom who decided it was time to go back to bed. A few months later, it was the neighbor's turn to babysit us for my mom. My sister and I have to stay the night in the creepy church with our neighbors. The neighbor kids showed us around their house to make sure we knew where everything was. The two kids' bedrooms were upstairs, next to the nursery they set up for the baby. Mom and dad's room was downstairs because it was the biggest bedroom. The kitchen and bathroom were downstairs and attached to the living room. It was an interesting layout for a house, but it was obviously still just a church with a living room set up in the main hall. We spent most of the night watching movies and cartoons and were successfully distracted for the majority of the evening. Eventually, it was bedtime, so we rolled out our sleeping bags and went to sleep in the living room. At some point in the night, we were all woken up by the baby crying from upstairs. It was annoyingly loud. We hoped the baby would just stop on its own, but after waiting for a while, the neighbor kid decided it was time to wake up their parents. The mom came out of their room wondering what was wrong, and we told her the baby was crying. She looked really confused, listened quietly for a moment, and obviously heard the baby crying. She then turned around and woke up her husband, saying something to him in a frightened tone. It was dark, so we couldn't see much into their bedroom, but after a moment, she came out of their bedroom holding their sleeping baby. The crying continued. Her husband comes out of their bedroom holding a broom like a baseball bat and tells us all to stay downstairs. We are all terrified, so we go into the living room to sit on the couch and wait for him to come back. As he climbs the squeaking stairs, we can still hear the baby crying, while their baby is still fast asleep. Suddenly, the crying stops. You can hear the husband walking around on the old floorboards, creaking with every step. He yells, come on out, or I'll call the police. No response. After a while of creaking floorboards, he comes back downstairs and shrugs his shoulders. Probably an injured animal or something. Must have scared it away. He says. Despite that, we all spent the rest of the evening on the couch together, they moved away shortly after, and the church remained uninhabited for several years after that. A few years after the baby incident, I became friends with someone who had moved into the house across the street from that church after I had moved away. When I learned he had lived across the street from where I used to live, I told him how I always hated that church. He agreed, and before I could tell him my story, he told me one of his own. He told me that he had once been getting home late when he thought he heard someone yelling in the distance. He wasn't able to make out any words, but he was sure he heard someone yelling something from far away, so he started looking around when he spotted a woman in a red dress circling inside the bell tower of the church, walking where there used to be a floor. His story made me shudder as I remembered the woman outside my sister's window. This happened a few years ago. There hasn't been much activity in the house since. It was a quiet summer night in about 2015 or 2014. My oldest brother claimed to have encountered this thing before with his girlfriend. It scared them both enough that they were sitting outside the house too scared to go back inside when I came back from the grocery store. The story goes as follows, in the basement, the only bedroom is set up with a bed facing the doorway. When this door is open, you can see outside the living room downstairs. My oldest brother and his girlfriend were lying down on this bed together, talking. He was facing the wall, and she was facing towards the doorway. She looked up from their conversation to see a little girl watching them from the doorway. She was obviously scared but not wanting to alarm my brother, she didn't say anything. She looked up again, this time the girl was next to the bed. She had enough and wanted to get out of that house immediately. I've always looked at this story with skepticism, as I've never really encountered anything paranormal myself. Of course, until it was my turn. Fast forward to 2015 or 2014, when this room was now in the possession of a different brother of mine. We're both into art, and I like to hang out in his room because he owned most of the art supplies, and we'd turn it into a makeshift art studio when he wasn't sleeping, of course. We had the door open, and the light outside in the living room was turned off. I was sitting on his bed, working in a sketchbook, when I looked up and saw the dark outline of a little girl watching me from the doorway. I don't feel particularly threatened or in danger, I'm just confused by what I'm looking at. I know it's a girl because I can see her short hair, stopping at the shoulders. She was also wearing a dress, though it was not long like a gown. She held her arms straight down, though slightly outward, as if she were walking only moments before. The thing that stuck with me was that I couldn't see her face. 
I was trying to make sense of what was happening just as my brother got up in a hurry and closed the door. He then asks me, did you see that too? To this day, we still talk about what we both saw in that basement. It's been very quiet since. This is an older house built in the 1950s, with many different owners. I couldn't tell you what happened here, as I don't know. Only that visitors often say they feel uneasy here and that sometimes my dog behaves very strangely. Maybe he sees things I can't. I've always been open-minded to the paranormal, but not necessarily religious. I have a deep love for science, but I cannot explain to you what I saw that night. My mom is from a small town in Mexico located in Zacatecas. When she was around 14, she had the habit of waking her mom up to go to the restroom since it was an older home and the restroom was located outside. My mom tells me that it was around 3 a.m. when she woke up and felt the need to use the restroom urgently. So she began calling out for her mom, and after a while of her not responding, she began getting agitated and started screaming. At this point, my mom turns around, and at the foot of her bed, she sees her mom standing there. She was wearing a white robe but had a very bleak expression on her face, and both of her arms were extended. My mom said that she suddenly felt extremely cold and had a huge sense of dread. She had never seen her mom wear a white robe. That's when she looked down and saw her mom's feet weren't touching the floor. At that moment, she screamed and quickly threw the covers over her head. Her mom, wearing something completely different, runs in to find my mom shaking in her bed. Nobody believed my mom, everyone told her it was a dream. Until a few days later, there was a power outage. During this, my mom and a few of her siblings, along with her parents, all decided to sleep in the living room. At around the same time, at 3 a.m., they heard the same undeniable wails of La Llorona down their street. None of them slept that night. I bought our house from a widow with a 10-year-old son for a very good price three years ago. We asked why she was selling, and she told us, too many memories. Her husband had renovated and expanded the entire house about five years earlier while he had cancer. He beat cancer, finished his dream home, and died of heart failure in his 30s. Well, my three-year-old daughter started talking about the man who built the house shortly after we moved in. She said he was nice and mean, and she said he was a dad, she said he yells when we leave the playroom a mess, and meanwhile, weird stuff was happening all over the house while I was renovating things. Lights blew out almost every day. I had five electricians in there who could find nothing wrong at all. I'd find sentimental items from the previous owners left on top of my tools. I had no idea where they came from. Like a handmade bookmark from his son to the deceased dad from when the kid was three. Then things stopped. My daughter told me the man was helping me do the floors. She told me that the little squares, tiles, in the laundry room were the last thing he did on the house. I never encouraged her to talk about him and didn't act very interested. A couple of months ago, my wife had me make changes to her walk-in closet. That day in the kitchen, a CF bulb blew out over my head. When I left the room, I heard metal, wood, glass, or something else clanging together. I thought my dog had something weird. I found the pull chains in my light or fan in the kitchen were all twisted and tangled together. Not at even. I had to get up on a step ladder to get them apart. I guess he disliked me changing his wife's walk-in closet he built. This is another one of my experiences with the paranormal. It happened in the same location as the last encounter I shared. Dustin's house. This time, we were hanging out in his garage. It was myself, Dustin, and two of our other closest friends. Brandon and Drew. The four of us were all gathered in Dustin's garage, simply hanging out and talking about all kinds of high school problems. During the talk, Dustin had made his way to the opposite side of the garage, next to the garage door. The three of us hadn't noticed that this was strategic on Dustin's part. See, there was another light switch in the garage, right next to the garage door. Dustin had hatched a scheme to scare us by suddenly turning the lights out in the middle of our conversation. It was near midnight, and we were already wound up. It was guaranteed to leave us in complete darkness. However, this didn't go his way or our way either. None of us knew what was going to happen that night. So Dustin turned out the lights. It startled us at first, but we quickly realized it was Dustin trying to scare us. We asked multiple times for him to turn the lights back on. He responded with poorly acted confusion. He eventually turned them back on for us. The lights in his garage were very bright. We were blinded for a second and had to let our eyes adjust to the light. That's when we saw it. For some strange reason, when the lights came back on, the three of us on the opposite side from Dustin were all facing the same way. We all faced the wall opposite the garage door. It was painted, so it made this very noticeable to us. We saw a black handprint that was slightly faded. Just this lone handprint. Now, 
that may seem like it's easily explainable. Which it definitely could be. However, what happened next can't be. The three of us mumbled to each other for a second. We were all asking if we remembered seeing that handprint before the lights went out. We all agreed that we hadn't. Dustin asked what was going on, and we told him we saw a black handprint. He must have thought we were joking because he didn't take us seriously at all. He turned the lights out on us again. This time, we reacted with a little more anger, telling him to turn the lights back on. He tried to joke around with us, but we weren't in a joking mood. He caught the hint and turned the lights back on. When our eyes adjusted to the light again, we saw them. Multiple black handprints, all overlapping each other in a horizontal straight line. Leading from one wall to the next. Every wall in the garage now had a line of overlapped black handprints. They were surrounding us. It looked as though something or someone had been running on all fours, horizontally, around us. Circling us, Dustin saw them as well. The feeling of terror and panic set in for all of us. We trampled over one another, trying to escape the garage. Drew pushed his hands and his head into my back, ramming me through the door into the house. The three of us spilled onto Dustin's living room floor. We couldn't catch our breath and kept shouting nonsense to each other, trying to make sense of what had just happened. We all had a hard time calming down. We tried to convince ourselves that it didn't even happen and that we only thought that we had seen the handprints. However, when we mustered the courage to check, we were greeted with the handprints still there. The garage then became a restricted area for us when we all hung out. The only time we would go back in was to try and do our own investigating. We never cleaned the handprints off. I'm not sure if it was out of fear of angering whatever had left them or if it was a reminder that it did happen. So I live in a rural place in a heavily wooded area. I've always felt totally safe in the woods, even at night. I used to go for night walks all the time. I'm not really a skeptic, I do believe in some paranormal things, though I've never had an experience like this one. Regardless, I still always try to find the most logical explanation, and I don't often feel scared or unnerved by things. This experience, however, really freaked me out, and I've been thinking about it ever since it happened, so I thought I'd share. So this was a few weeks ago. My parents had gone to bed, but I wanted to stay up late, so I settled into the living room to read. Our living room has these giant windows, almost covering the entire wall. I left the blinds open, turned on one lamp, and sat right by the window. My elderly dog, who had been let out already to go to the bathroom for the night and was back inside, started pacing the house and barking and wouldn't settle down. This is unlike her, she's super old, so she usually goes right to bed, and she knows not to bark in the house like that. We let her out again, and she wanted right back in. We gave her some food, but still, for about an hour, she kept pacing and barking. She wasn't even barking at the windows or looking outside, she just paced up and down the halls and barked at nothing in particular. This kind of weirds me out, but I just shrugged it off, and then she finally settled down to sleep in my parents' bedroom. About 20 minutes later, I was reading on the couch by the window with my cat when I heard an animal walking outside. I only heard it take a few steps, it sounded large, and I figured it was probably a deer. My cat jumps up and acts super interested in what's outside, pacing up and down the windowsill and peering out there. Then, after a few minutes, the screen of the window furthest from me across the room starts shaking violently. Like something is shaking or banging on them really hard. Again, these windows span the whole wall. It startled me, and I looked over. I couldn't make anything out in the dark or see what was outside, and then the shaking and banging grew even more violent, and the windows next to me started shaking too. My cat freaked out and ran out of the room. At this point, I was really scared, and I did something you'll probably think is kind of silly. I literally closed my eyes, threw the blanket over my head, and waited for it to stop. The shaking and banging lasted for several more seconds. I remember being taken aback at how much force seemed to be behind it. I just couldn't bring myself to look. I had an awful feeling, and I think if I looked and saw something horrible, it would really traumatize me. It finally stopped, and I stayed under the blanket for two entire hours before I could work up the nerve to get up and go to my bedroom. The next morning, after I woke up, I'd calmed down a lot and figured it was probably some kind of animal. I went outside to look at that window to see if I could find tracks or something and look at the screens. What I found made my skin crawl. There was a single, long diagonal slash in the window screen of the window I was sitting right next to. If you are standing in front of where the slash is and looking inside, the slash aligns right over the spot where I was sitting. No tracks. So that's creepy, and what's weird to me is that if it were an animal, why weren't there more slashes? Just one, single, deliberate slash is strange. There were absolutely no scratch marks or slashes anywhere else on the screens or around the windows, just that one. The other screens were just pretty loose now. 
If it were a bird, I would have heard its wings flapping. I feel like I would have heard animal sounds if it were any kind of animal. If it were a person, which is even scarier to me, I would think someone who would do something like this would have taken it further and probably would have done more to scare and intimidate than just shaking some windows and slashing one and then leaving just to scare me. Besides the shaking and banging, there were absolutely no other sounds. And since we live rurally, the chance that it was a person seems more unlikely. It freaks me the duck out, but there's nothing I can really do about it other than put up trail cameras. Nothing like this has ever happened to me the entire time I've lived here. A few nights before this happened, I actually started feeling some bad vibes from the woods at night, to be honest. Like I said, I am normally very at ease with them, but I was out smoking a few nights before in my backyard and just felt like I was being watched, and something was just making my skin crawl. I had been avoiding going outside at night again, and then this happened. This experience really kind of freaked me out, but there is not much I can do except put up some cameras. When my son was around three, he was in our bed and constantly staring up at the right-hand corner of our ceiling. I asked my son what he was staring at, he looked at me and told me, the man in the corner. I internally freak out and tell him to go to sleep. Roll on the next night, and the same thing happens, I start asking questions like, what does he look like? And why is he here? He tells me that he has a mustache like granddad, my dad is very much alive, and he is here to protect us. I said, okay, that's nice. Let's go to bed in a let's change the subject kind of way. A few days or a week later, I'm sitting on the bed, and my son comes happily bounding in the bedroom door, stops bolt straight, looks to the same corner, and says, the man. I turn my head quickly to look up, scared shitless, and as I do, a black shape, mist, or shadow whizzes past, small but very fast. I call, scream bloody murder, my husband, and he runs in expecting something bad. I explain the scenario, and he looks at me like I have two heads. My son never mentioned him again. Now I go on to have a baby daughter, and guess what? From the age of 5 to 6 months, she stares at the same corner like she's concentrating on something. We moved, thankfully. My son still complains that he sees or feels things, or sometimes points blank, and refuses to tell me what he's dreamt of or is scared of, he's 7 now and very wary of the dark. I've told him to just tell them that you're a child of God and they can't get at you. But I'm sure my son is sensitive, he's never had an imaginary friend or talked to random people, but he does get creeped out easily. Before my best friends and I were separated, one passed away, the other moved away, we used to ride around doing all of the haunted legend places within reasonable driving distances. Sometimes we'd drive a few hours, but most of them weren't scary, other than the adrenaline filled, hyped up did you hear or see that? That would cause us to get spooked. This one was different, way different. We were just out of high school, probably 20 at most, and we were looking for an actually scary place to visit. A lot of the people we knew knew we were into these kinds of things, so we'd always get tips on where to go. There were the original three of us that day, and another friend wanted to tag along. After a little drive to our destination, about 45 minutes, we stopped at a Wawa to get gas and grab a few snacks. Like I stated earlier, we were all about 20 at the time, so we were all hyped up because we knew spooky time was getting close. We'd always pick on that other friend that tagged along, nothing harsh, just AHH, you're scared. So I believe it was me who said something along those lines that was overheard by a few people. It got the attention of a few people in the Wawa, including these two creepy older guys, who seemed like they didn't fit in. Their clothes were all beat up and dirty, and they just didn't seem right for the area, and the time was probably 8pm on a Saturday night. What's the little one scared of? I asked one of the guys. I say little because the three of us are all abnormally tall, the shortest between us three was 6 feet 4 inches, and he was of normal height, probably about 5 feet 9 inches. We replied and explained how we got tipped to go to this road because it's haunted. They replied that it wasn't that scary, and if we wanted a real scare, we should go to this random road. I forget exactly what it was called. But apparently there's this random memorial statue for a plane crash in the middle of the woods that crazy things are supposed to happen at. We grabbed our stuff and didn't think anything of it. As soon as we left, the group started talking and decided to go down the other road that those guys had hyped up. I know, a typical horror movie. What not to do? So we got to the entrance of the road, and it already did not disappoint. Woods on both sides, not one damn street light in sight. And I remember there was like a detention center off to the right. In the middle of nowhere. So the spooks already began the second we hit the entrance. We decided to drive down the road and search for the statue. We noticed that there were trees cut down on the side of the road, laying parallel to the shoulder of the road. We finally found the statue. 
about five minutes go by of silence, and we decided to enhance the scare factor by shutting the lights off. About a minute goes by, and we see a shadow figure pop out from the statue. We all freak out as it starts walking towards us, but it was making movements that no human would be normally capable of. It was dark out. But this thing was black. It was darker than the woodsy sky, so we could make out some of it. This thing was huge. Like I said earlier, we were all extremely large compared to the average guy, but this thing would have dwarfed any of us. We decide to peel out of there and continue down the road, figuring it would lead us out of there. Boy, were we wrong? About three minutes go by, and we hit a dead end, which in this case was an open spot in the woods with sand everywhere. The cutout was massive but surrounded by woods. There were different cutouts and ways to go from there, and I'm pretty sure the road continued after this cutout, but we were pretty deep in the woods at this point. So we decide to turn around there and, obviously, leave. After we turn around, we stop just to take in the eerie feeling. The other three guys were talking about the shadow we saw earlier, while I happened to catch something out of the corner of my eye. About 40 feet away from me, I see what appears to be a white face, and then another, and another. All surrounding the car. The other guys didn't see them, and I'm rarely scared, but seeing me panic, they knew something was up. My panic caused them to panic. All panicking now. We then floor it far away from the sand turnaround. We get about half a mile down the road, somewhat near the statue, and pull over to gather our composure to get out of there. When we stopped, I swear I heard the typical ghost do noise. This was now turning into a movie, I wish I was never a part of it. So we are really scared now. After finding the way we came, we started heading back out. Remember those trees I talked about earlier? They were now laying in the middle of the road, blocking us in. As we all see the white faces, masks? That I saw earlier. Thank God my one friend, the driver, was good at driving and valued safety over his car. We drove on the edge of the woods, and it felt like we were defying gravity to speed our way out. The car was literally sideways, on the edge of the woods. I mean, I could literally stick a single finger out the window and touch the trees. We all made it home safely that night. After doing research, we found out that that spot was notorious in that area for crazy things happening, such as body dumps and murders. Because of the shadow and the ghost noise we heard, my head, heart, and gut tell me that that place is actually haunted, as previously stated, that place is famous for dumping bodies, along with a plane crash 100 years ago, so there's bound to be some spirits there. I think where we were that night was actually haunted. We just happened to be there on a night where there were more things going on. I can't say for certain, but I'm 99% sure we survived one of their setups that night. But I'm 100% sure I will never go back again.